My name is Dr. Weafi, and I'll be guiding you through the GIS modules of this course. As you probably know, <coughs> GIS has been used in several other industries for quite a while now. But currently, GIS is seen as an essential tool for public health professionals. And that's the main reason why our MPH students are introduced to the world of geographic information systems through the p -Corp. Beside what you learn or will be introduced in this course, there are a number of GIS courses that we offer. Therefore, I encourage you to explore the other GIS courses available. In this module, there are three learning outcomes. We will define GIS and explain how it can be used in public health. We will explore online GIS tools. We will create maps for presentation, report, and sharing. To achieve these outcomes, you need to individually go through the learning activities assigned before doing the assignment. Let's try to understand what GIS is. GIS is a short form of geographic information systems. It is a science and technology that helps us to understand our world. This is possible because almost everything we do happens somewhere. Also, geographic problems require a special approach to solve them. And for that reason, systems have been put in place in order to um, explore the world. There are at least five components of GIS. This includes software, data, hardware, applications, and people. Basically, all these five components must be present in order for GIS to work. So GIS is not just creating a map. Even if you have to create a map, you need software, you need data, you need a computer, you need the application, and of course you need somebody to do that. And that is very important. There are three types of GIS, or you can also say GIS software types. We have the desktop, for example, our GIS for desktop. We have mobile, for example, our pad, and we have internet GIS. For example, ArcGIS Online. It is the ArcGIS Online that we are going to use for this class. Internet GIS is, has become very, very popular because of the fact that it is maps and GIS created through internet um, services can be accessible to a much wider audience. These include routing applications, assessing health and related data sets based on location, and many more. With data, there are two main types of GIS data. We have the vector data and the raster data. The de vector data are the type of data that can be discreetly identified on the map. In other words, point lines and polygons. The raster data sets are the images, such, such as satellite images. And those most of the times are continuous. And then we have the tables, which can then be converted to a map if it has the correct geographic 
units. The good news is that in public health, many of the data sets that we deal with already have geographic information embedded in them. In addition to the data, we also need tools and applications. And so there are several applications and tools that have been built. For instance, tools for editing, tools for capturing data, tools for creating your map, tools for manipulating your data, and of course, tools for analyzing data sets. And throughout <coughs> the module, you have the opportunity to learn some of these tools. So how can GIS help in public health? The map that you see here is demonstrating diabetic, diabetic patient population um, for a university hospital and primary health care network. GIS can be used for research and planning. It can be used for various special decision support applications, emergency response system, accessibility options, identify, identifying special populations, disease tracking, and risk factor mapping, and environmental health. I must say that practically every field or discipline in public health can make use of GIS. And therefore, as you get exposed to the various tools and techniques in GIS, try to relate that to your own field of study and see areas where you can utilize this important tool. In this module, we are going to go through some activities. There are some activities that are to be made by each one of you. These are the individual skill activities, and you must do this in order to build the skills. The first one is you need to create a GIS online account. I have linked a document that will allow you to create this account. The one you are going to create is your own personal account. The personal account has some limitations. So in order for you to enjoy the full capacity of RGIS online, I will create um, a link and send it to you to convert your personal account into um, the Loma Linda University um, RGIS, um, GIS um, portal so that you can have access to as many tools as possible to allow you to go through the subsequent exercises. <clears throat> the next tutorial is to explore GIS maps. This is an online tutorial that requires your um, your organization account login in order to do this efficiently. The next exercise is how to use ArcGIS online. These are step-by-step -step tutorials that you need to do. The last one is how to create a story map. Story map has become so popular that it is used to communicate some specific um, ideas and policy and maps to other people. So again, you must do these exercises in order to build the necessary skills that are required for your assignment. The assignment is to assemble relevant data and create a map of East Coachella Valley showing population at risk of environmental conditions and drinking water. Once you create this map, you want to share it as a story map. It is important for you to assemble relevant data. 
This map will be used for subsequent assignments. So make sure that you do it and save it and it will remain on your ArcGIS content menu so that you can access it um, in the future. As you create these maps, there are some things you need to consider. Who will be using the map? Under what circumstances will the map be used? Is the map likely to be copied or fast? What objectives should the map achieve? How sensitive is the map information? These are things to consider as you um, develop your maps. But keep in mind that these are skills that you are going to learn. Therefore, it is important that you spend the time, ask relevant questions, and I'll be always available to guide you through if you encounter any issue. I wish you all the best and enjoy the class. Thank you.